Let's let's uh, look at some basic circuit analysis, um, and uh, uh, let's take a real simple circuit. We're gonna have a battery, and we're gonna have some kind of load. In this case, a resistor, and there we go. We got a closed circuit. Um, the long side of the battery is the plus side, and the short side is the negative side. Um, we're gonna get a current flowing like this going to flow around like that um, and uh, that's the direction positive charges would move um, uh, because this is the positive side of the battery basically there's a a very small overabundance of positive charges and overabundance of negative charges here so the positive charges would want to move like this now positive charges of course don't move but current is defined as the direction of positive charge would move so we think about that they would go like this really what's happening is these negative charges are repelling each other because they're all clumped up here. So they're going to go, hey, where could we go? And they go, oh, look, there's positive over there. And we got a path. So we're going to go like that. So the, the uh, electrons are going to go like that. Um, but we're going to just think about positive charges moving. All right. Now, so this is a battery. And um, this is a, a, a source of potential difference. So we say that um, from here to here, like if this is, let's say it's a, a 1.5 volt battery, let's say. That's those little cylindrical ones there. They're, they're 1.5 volts. Um, and what, what it does is this would take a charge from here and uh, through the magic of chemistry, it will raise it up to here. It, it will actually take the charge and move it up to here and deposit it here. So um, there's an overabundance of positive charges here. It gives it energy. It gives it 1.5 joules per coulomb. So it raises it up to higher energy level. Now this charge will move through a wire. Now these are ideal wires when we um, draw these circuits. So this is a wire of zero resistance. So it takes no energy to move a wire through zero resistance. So it pushes it through. Now it does take energy to move through that, right? So we say that this is a voltage gain here. This char these charges gained potential difference, and this is a voltage drop, right? This is the high end, this is the low end. So we say there's a potential difference from this between this point and that point. It took energy to push that charge through this load, this resistor. So, and it turns out that in any closed loop, if I start here at point A and I go all the way around, the sum of the voltage gains, this is a voltage gain, an energy gain, equals the sum of the voltage drops. Here's the voltage drops. So if you take a look in your notes, you got sum of voltage gain equals the sum of the voltage drops. In this case, um, let's say the resistance here of this resistor was, I don't know, say 10 ohms. Right? So, um, so I got a resistor, a 10 ohm resistor there. And um, the sum of the voltage gains, in this case, uh, so the V gains equals V drops. And it has to. It's a conservation of energy thing. If I start here and I gain energy, I must lose the energy once I get back to here. It's conservation of energy. So uh, in this case, um, so I got... Uh, V of bat, v, v across the battery equals V across the resistor, uh, which is uh, 1.5 volts equals V across the resistor. Then I can figure out how much current I have in the circuit. Uh, because I know from Ohm's Law, which we learned uh, the other day, that R equals V over I. Now, this resistance value is inherent in the resistor. This does not change. We got this relationship, R equals V over I. Um, this is a fixed quantity. Voltage does not affect resistance, nor does current. Voltage does affect current. How big of a battery we have here, um, how much energy we give this charge, does affect the current. It doesn't affect the resistor. The resistor is this physical object, and the resistance doesn't change um, under normal conditions. It can change uh, with temperature, uh, 
but under normal operating conditions it doesn't change. It certainly doesn't change due to voltage or current. Um, so we could, uh, so I got that. So I could figure out how much current is in the circuit. Um, I equals uh, V over R. So in this case there was a 1.5 volt drop across the resistor divided by 10 ohms. And I don't even need a calculator for that one. Um, 0.15 amperes is how much current is going. That's 1.5 amperes. That's a good amount of current. That's a lot of current. Um, oops. Not 1.5. 5. 0.15. 0.15. 0.15 amperes. All right. In your notes, we got uh, we got a three volt battery. Quite frankly, I find this hard to believe. I believe it's probably two 1.5 volt batteries. But anyway, oh, we have two resistors in this circuit. So here we go. We got a circuit, and uh, we got a three volt battery, and we got two resistors, R1 and R2, and uh, we have a voltage gain of three volts as we go around here, and a voltage drop. Uh, V1 here and a voltage drop V2. We draw the arrows here. I'm doing this to show you it's a potential difference. It's comparing this point to that point. That's what voltage is. It's comparing two points. It's a difference in potentials between uh, two points. All right. So, uh, so they said there is a one point, this is a 1.7 volt drop. 1.7 volts dropped across R1. Um, uh, what is a voltage? What is this? What is this then? What's the voltage drop across 2? And if R1 equals 10 ohms, all right, R1 equals 10 ohms, um, how much current is flowing? All right. All right. So the current has to be the same everywhere in the circuit because it is, um, it is the current is the flow of charge, and there can't be a buildup of charge. If there's a buildup of charge, there are tremendous forces involved, and they will stop the buildup. Um, or something really gnarly will happen, um, but you won't get a buildup of charge, any significant buildup of charge in a circuit. Um, so uh, let's find the uh, current in uh, the circuit. Uh, so what we're going to do is first we're going to we're going to um, oh wait what's the first question what is the voltage across across R two all right well the voltage of the battery has to equal uh, the voltage drop across V one plus V two we have the sum of the voltage gains we only have one voltage gain in the circuits the battery um, equals the sum of the voltage drops we have two here so we want to know V two is so V2 equals uh, V bat minus uh, V1. Uh, v bat is 3 volts minus V1 is 1.7 volts. 3 minus 1.7 is 1.3 volts, I believe. All right. So this must be uh, 1.3 volts. All right. Uh, what is the current flowing in the circuit? Well... Again, there's only one path, so the current has to be the same everywhere in this circuit. Um, so, let's see. Uh, why don't we just uh, calculate the uh, current here, right? So, now, you need to do this. Now, you have this relationship, R equals V over I, right? And we want to know what the current is. So, I'm going to go I equals V over R. What you need to do is you need, because this doesn't mean any current equals any voltage to any res resistance. you got to be specific. So in this case, there is only one current. So I don't need to be specific in that case because there's only there's one flow in the circuit. We're going to see later, we're going to have other circuits with multiple branches where there'll be multiple currents. But since there's only one path, there's only one flow. So uh, this is going to be a V1 over R1. You got to be specific. You can't just throw any voltage in there, any resistance, otherwise things go badly. All right, V1 is 1.7 volts, R1 is 10 ohms. Oh, that, I can do that in my head. 
Um, that is 0.17 amps. All right. 0.17 amps or 170 milliamps. Um, all right. So there we go. There was the current in the circuit. And there was the voltage across V2. V2. All right. That was that. Was that. Uh, let's try another one. A uh, circuit that looks like this. R1, R2. V1 is the voltage drop from here to here. V2 is the voltage drop from here to here. Uh, go plus minus, plus minus, plus minus. And... All right, and we just call this V bat. In the circuit, two resistors are connected to battery as shown. The current flows in the circuit, and there is a 5.8 volt drop across R1. All right, that's 5.8 uh, volts, and uh, and uh, 6.2 volts across R2. 6.2 volts. There we go. 6.2 volts dropped across there. What is V bat? All right. Well, V bat. Some of the voltage gains because some of the voltage drops. Uh, I'm just getting these up. These must add up to the battery voltage, which is going to be 12 volts. All right. It's 12 volts. 12 volts. So is that up to 12? It's 12 volts. Right. I go around the circuit. Some of the voltage gains equal to some of the voltage drops. All right, let's say if R1 is 10 ohms, all right, let me put that down there. And you want to do that. If they ever give you any information in a paragraph, get it in your diagram. You want to get it that on your circuit. It's going to make your life easier. You don't want it in a paragraph. Paragraphs are for words. And we want ideas, I guess. I don't know. Oh, words represent ideas. Oh, wow. This is getting to be quite a, a tangled mess I'm getting myself into. If R1 equals 10, what's the current flowing in the circuit? All right. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I know the voltage and the resistance. I can figure out the current through here. And since there's only one path, the current must be the same everywhere in this circuit. So I'm going to say that uh, uh, I equals uh, I1 equals V1 over R1. All right. Oh, you just subscripts. Don't you say I equals V over R. I1 equals V1 over R1. All right. Uh, so uh, V1 is 5.8 volts. And R1 is 10 ohms. I love 10s. 10s are great. I love 10s. Ah, ah, 10s. I love 10s. 10s are the best. Uh, 0.58 amperes. All right. All right. I think I'll have you do the other two uh, on your own. Hopefully, uh, that won't be too difficult. All right. That's all I got for you today. I'm going to give you some practice. The extreme. <laughs>